Marshall, owner of Marshall's Hot Sauce, and I'm here today to do a little cooking demo for you, and this is my first one. So um, I made this uh, recipe on Afternoon Live, but those segments are only six minutes, and I felt like I really wanted people to see how easy this recipe is. So if you have any questions while I'm making it, you can go ahead and put them in there, and Dirk's going to tell me if anybody has any questions. So. Um, we're going to make this de la carta squash. So de la carta squash is a really small squash. Um, I'm farm neighbors with um, some really great farmers at the farmer's market and the uh, variety that I got is from Glass Ray Farms and they're right next to me at the PSU farmer's market on Saturdays. And these specific types of de la carta squash are two varieties, the honey stick and, or honey boat and candy stick is the two varieties. So they're really cute and small, and then the flesh is just a little bit oranger than your regular typical de la carta squash. So I'm gonna get these in the oven so that they can roast in the time that I'm doing the demo. So I just went ahead and split them in half, and then you just wanna scrape out the insides of these. And if you want, just like you would with pumpkin seeds, you know, I'm all about using everything. So my um, cookbook teaches people how to use anything that would normally be composted. So you can save these seeds just like you would with pumpkin seeds, and you can roast them. You could put a little bit of hot sauce on them, you could put some of our hot sauce powder on them, or if you just want to make them for the kids, you could just add a little salt and olive oil and roast those. So I'm going to go ahead and save these to do that later. But the reason I like these little squash is that eventually, once we make our soup, this is going to become our bowl. And so you can eat the inside of the squash, which is really cool. And it holds your soup, and it's super cute. So I'm just going to scrape these out. And I like to, when I'm cutting the squash in half, I like to do it long ways like this. But then I also like to leave the stem on just because I think it makes for, I don't know if you can see that, it makes for a super cute little bowl. Dirk actually cut these for me because he's like really good at it. Food Innovation Center says they're very good roasted. Very good roasted. Yeah, Food Innovation Center. I'm guessing that's Sarah Missoni. Hey, buddy. Um, the squash are roasted, and we're going to actually roast them in the oven, and then we're going to use them for the bowls. So we're going to roast them at 350 just for 20 minutes. So all I'm going to do is sprinkle them with just a little bit of olive oil, and I'm going to rub that in. And you're going to make sure it goes on the inside of the bowl and the outside of the bowl. It's okay to get messy when you're cooking. I like to use my hands a lot. <laughs> so you just want to make sure they're nice and coated. And then you're going to um, put them cut side down onto the parchment paper. You could use tin foil too. I always use parchment paper just because I think it makes things nice and easy. And it makes sure that that, that stuff doesn't stick to the tray. Food Innovation Center wants to know if you can eat the skin. Oh yeah. You can totally eat the skin of this particular squash, of the de la carta squash. My husband doesn't like it though, so that's kind of the nice thing about these bowls is that if you have somebody that doesn't want to eat the skin, they don't have to. They can just use the spoon, it's got the, flat, the inside is going to come right out. But if they do like it and don't want to waste things like me, I eat it, Dirk doesn't. And then, you know, I'm really into seasoning as I go, so I'm just going to season these with a little bit of salt and then put them face down on the tray, season the inside, season the outside for those people that will eat the outside. Okay, and then my oven's preheated, 350. I'm gonna have Dirk stick them in the oven for me, just in the center rack of the oven at 350. And my messy hands need a kitchen towel. Uh, and then we're gonna roast those for 25 minutes, so Dirk, if you'll just set our timer, and you know, depending on the size, I used some little ones. The recipe calls for two squash, which will make four bowls. Um, depending on the size, it'll take maybe 20, 25 minutes, if it's a really big one, 30. And um, when I did the new segment this week, they asked if you could do it with butternut squash, spaghetti squash. You totally can. It's just gonna be a longer cook time. And it's a lot. Like the reason that these ones are nice is it's just one little serving as the bowl. If you do a butternut squash, it's going to be a lot of squash to eat along with your soup because the idea is that you eat it all together. So um, I'm going to just go ahead and get my pan hot here. Woo! 
I'm trying a new portable stove. <laughs> so you know, fire is always fun. So you're just gonna put a little bit of olive oil in a pot. What are you looking at? <laughs> Am I gonna light myself on fire? <laughs> so about a tablespoon of olive oil. I, of course, like we have a local uh, Durant olive oil. It's the only Oregon olive oil that I know of anyways. Um, but I love their olive oil, so I'm gonna use that. And yeah, my plan is looking good. Hopefully, I've never used a camp stove inside, so I opened the door. <laughs> so I just diced up an onion. This is just a regular yellow onion, nothing special about it. And as far as the size goes, you know, I just said dice, which um, is about like this is a dice. And uh, you can do whatever size you want. It depends on what you want your soup texture to be. So if you want to have bigger pieces in it, you could do bigger pieces. You could thinly slice them if you want it to be that, however you want really. But it's just one whole yellow onion, is it? So we're gonna go ahead and put our onion in once our oil is hot. And whenever you know, you're know you reading a recipe and it says the oil is shimmering, it's really hard to explain what that looks like, but it's really, it, I think of it as being really fluid. You don't want it to be quite smoking yet. That would be a little bit too hot. Um, but just so, I'll just take the pan and make sure that it's like loose and moving around a little more so than how it just comes straight out of the bottle. So I got my onion, and you can hear that it's ready because it's sizzling. So we're just gonna get that onion in there. I like to make, just make sure to get all of it. I don't like to waste any little pieces for the dishwasher. And I always talk about this when I do cooking demos, but I'm a big fan of not stirring. Um, my husband knows this because I'll have stuff on the stove and he'll come by and want to stir the pot. And I'm like, no, 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 don't touch it, leave it. I wanted to, I wanted to like, if you let the onions kind of sit there, they'll caramelize a little bit, so stick to the pan, and then you can get all of that flavor up out of it with some liquid. Um, so you are going to stir things, but just not as often as you think. So we really want to get some of the moisture out of the onions. Hi Dave and Mom. Oh, my, they're telling me who's on, on the call. Hi, my brother. <laughs> and hi, both of my mom. Thanks for joining me today on this experiment. Um, and we are going to try to do these cooking demos every Thursday. We're cooking lots of food all the time anyways to um, create and test recipes to post on our website. So I figured, why not do it for all of you? And uh, my goal with these is really just to get people to buy food from their farmer's market. Um, I want to use vegetables that maybe people don't know what to do with or they see. And, you know, I think a lot of people buy squash and just tend to roast it in the oven just, you know, with olive oil cube it up, and that's great, but I wanted to come up with some creative, fun things for you to do. Food Innovation Center says cook enchiladas? Co you want me to cook enchiladas? <laughs> I can cook enchiladas. I'll have to figure out which market ingredient to use. Um, I'm sure, well, I could use Three Sisters tortillas and one of our sauces, so yeah, I'll, I'll do enchiladas. Thanks, Sarah, for the suggestion. <laughs> And I'm going to find a fun creative vegetable to throw in there somewhere. And so I waited until I knew that my pan was going to have some color. I think you can kind of see in there. There's just a little bit of brown, which is what I want. I want there to be a little bit of color. So I'm going to go ahead and stir it. And I do things at a pretty high heat. Um, so, you know, I never really cook much low unless I'm simmering, which we're going to do with this soup later. But I like to do medium high, maybe even a little bit higher. Uh, so don't be afraid of high heat. I think people are a lot. Um, but I think it's really how you can get some nice sear on your vegetables, get a lot of flavor out of stuff. So it's really nice. Hi, Anthony. Nukes <laughs> uh, hot sauce missed the oil. Oh, olive oil. Uh, we're using Durant olive oil. They're local. They're out in Dundee. They have the best olive oil. You can go out there, um, there where they have the, so they grow the olives, and uh, you can go out to the olive mill and you can taste all of their oils. They have a beautiful gift shop. Uh, they have, it's just one of the most beautiful places. They do wine tastings. 
Um, and you can taste all of the different olive oils they do. So this is just their traditional olive oil, but they do a lot of infused um, different flavors and things like that. I'll use the garlic olive oil a lot if I you know, don't want to put garlic into something or don't have the time to peel garlic. It's really nice. So I'm just going to stir this again. Like I said, not too much. But just to make sure it doesn't burn, but it smells so good. I also, um, a, you know, a little, after it's cooking just a little bit, I'll add a little bit of salt. And it'll help release a little bit of water from those onions. Um, and like I said, I like to season along the way. So whenever I write a recipe, I'll write salt to taste. Because some people are on special diets or don't want to use a lot of salt. So I kind of just leave it up to you. But the way that I do it is just to add a little bit throughout, um, you know, the cooking of the recipe. I tell. I um, it's funny to have Dirk here because um, I should actually have you sit here because I'll always look over there. So it does. Don't think that I'm like talking to a ghost. Dirk is on this side, and you guys are all on this side. So I'll try to look at you and not not Dirk. Queen of Hearts <laughs> loves the serrano ginger. Oh lemon. yeah. So today I'm going to use our serrano ginger lemongrass sauce. Uh, it is our most popular sauce. It has been from the beginning. And um, it is not an easy sauce to produce because we get all of our produce locally from the farmer's market. So our lemongrass and our ginger come from Groundwork Organic Farms. And um, we prep all of the lemongrass ourselves. And lemongrass is not easy to prep on a big scale. So, um, and I'm gonna just, my onions were sticking just a little bit because I started talking. If your onions start to stick, I just put a little splash of stock in there just to make sure it doesn't burn. It'll pull up all that nice flavor off the bottom. So the Serrano Ginger Lemongrass Sauce, I forgot what I was talking about. Um, we make it all year long, but we are really producing, you know, the majority of it right now um, because that's when everything is in season. So people a lot of times think of pepper season as being in the summer. For us here in Oregon, really we're getting most of our produce, especially peppers, um, things like lemongrass, ginger, all of that stuff is really right now. So October is re a really busy time for us. Okay. So I make sure to get all that good color up off the bottom of the pot. Our onions are looking really good. And they're not, you know, quite translucent, but they're nice and soft. So that's a fine time to go ahead and add in the other ingredients. So I just want to make sure to get all of that flavor scraped off the bottom. And also it'll make it so that while it's simmering, it won't stick. So we're going to scrape that there. Fogging up my glasses. <laughs> okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and add our, so this soup recipe is super simple. So we're making a red lentil, lentil soup. We're just gonna do the, um, the onions, a little bit of salt. We're gonna go ahead and add in two tablespoons of our Serrano ginger lemongrass sauce. Now, of course, if you wanted to make it spicier, you can add more. If you wanted to make it for people that don't like spice, you could just add maybe a tablespoon. This recipe isn't that finicky. You can kind of do whatever you're into. Um, but, you know, our daughter is six. She'll eat the soup. She loves it. It's not too spicy for her. Um, so two tablespoons, I think, is the perfect amount. And then I'm going to, and then I just stir in the serrano ginger lemongrass sauce. That helps, the um, acidity of it helps get that flavor off the bottom of the pot as well. Then we're gonna go ahead and add in curry powder. You can add whatever kind of curry powder you're, you like. We have a spice guy who blends ours for us. So our curry powder has fenugreek, it has actual curry leaves, it has um, black pepper, turmeric, a bunch of stuff. So find one that you love. You gotta love the flavor of it. Um, and then go ahead and put it in there. So this smells so good already. So we're gonna go ahead and stir that in. And then one and a half cups of red lentils. So these red lentils, they're actually kind of orange, but they're called red lentils, but they're split. And so they cook really fast. So we're gonna go ahead and put those in, give it a stir. And then I'm gonna add in our stock. This is just vegetable stock. And I do have 
a vegetable stock tip for you. So, you know, whenever I'm doing any kind of prep with celery, carrots, peppers, uh, onions, anything like that, all of the scraps that are left over that I'm not using for the, for the dish, I will throw in a freezer bag in the freezer, and then as soon as the freezer bag is full, I will go ahead and boil stock. Um, if I'm doing a chicken stock, because uh, like I have bones from you know using a whole chicken, we'll keep all the rib bones and things from cutting it out. Uh, I make sure to cook it for above four hours, simmer it for above four hours so you get all that good bone broth um, action happening there. And then with the vegetable stock, same, we do about four hours. So I just put it all in the pot, fill it up, boil it. I'll pull all the thyme plants out of the garden and put those in there, anything with a lot of flavor. And then we use a lot of fresh turmeric in our sauces, so we get that from the farmers market as well. We peel it. We pay a lot of money for that organic turmeric, so we save all of the skins. So those go into a freezer bag too, and then we'll use them for things like stock. So with our soup, we're gonna go ahead, the ingredients are all in there. Uh, teaspoon of salt, I'm gonna put that in there too. Um, again, you could wait and add that a little later since we seasoned as we go, um, but I've made this recipe so many times now, I know that's how much I like, <laughs> but you can do whatever you like. Um, so we're gonna just bring it to a boil, and then we're gonna turn it down and simmer it um, without a lid on it, because we want that um, the lentils to absorb moisture, we want some of the moisture to cook out. So we're just gonna go ahead and simmer it once it comes to a boil for about 15 minutes, but you can tell it's whenever the lentils are tender is when it's done. So I'm gonna let that do its thing. I wanted to see if anybody has any questions so far about what I'm doing. Any questions, comments, ideas for my next segment, which will be next week? I, Sarah said enchiladas, so I'm gonna put that on the list. I was thinking Brussels sprouts, because I feel like people always say they don't like Brussels sprouts, but they are so good. Just make sure my flame's on, it is. <laughs> Hi Heath. Um, Loco Canopies is on here, and they make my farmer's market tent, which I love. I have this cool, super sleek, uh, black, gothy tent of my dreams. <laughs> so, and I met Heath at um, the Farmer's Market Conference I go down to in San Diego every year, so thanks for joining. <laughs> uh, the last ingredient I was gonna talk about uh, for our soup, you can put it in before or after it simmers, is coconut milk. And I like to use whole fat coconut milk. Um, and I know that a lot of people buy coconut milk in a can, which would be more than what the recipe calls for. Um, I like to buy it in a carton so that I can just use a little bit here and there. So this is a cup of coconut milk that I'm gonna put in there. Sarah, something said would like uh, to know what you're making. Oh, hi Sarah. <laughs> I'm making a red lentil soup, curry soup, with our serrano ginger lemongrass sauce that goes inside of a de la cotta squash bowl. So I just put the, um, you missed the, um, squash going into the oven, but it'll come out in just a few. So I'll show you how cute it is. Uh, but you roast the squash at 350 for 20 minutes, and in the time that it's roasting, you can make this delicious lentil soup. Uh, going back to the stock, Food Innovation Center wants to know how much salt goes in the stock. Okay, good question. Um, so when I was telling you guys how to make uh, vegetable stock or chicken stock, how much salt goes in. So when I make my stock, I actually don't season it at all. It's one of the things that I don't season as I go. Um, when I'm cooking food, I season as I go, but with the stock, I don't because I wanna make sure that um, it doesn't end up being too salty or it doesn't make other things too salty. So I'll use um, stock in a lot of soups and things, and so or if I'm doing something with cheese, then I don't really want extra salt in it. So when I'm doing my vegetable stock, no salt. But I do add whole peppercorns to the broth when I'm boiling it. Just a few. If you add too many, it gets kind of dark. I think, did I see another question there? No, that was it. Okay, so back to coconut milk. Uh, full fat coconut milk is what I like to use. It gives things a nice creamy flavor, but it can still be vegan. When I'm writing our um, recipes that go on our website and then I post, because there were a farmer's market focused sauce, I like to make the ingredients farmer's market focused too. So um, a lot of the ones that I will be doing here and that I will be posting will be vegan, just because it gives access to everybody. And a lot of our, I wanna focus more on the vegetables at the market, even though there's some wonderful poultry and meat farmers as well. My, 
the you know issues with doing cooking demos from my home kitchen are that my whole family is here so my daughter needed something from jerk <laughs> okay so our soup came it has come to a boil I'm just gonna go ahead and reduce it to a simmer so remember it's gonna be um, about 20 minutes and you you know I talked earlier about not stirring things I don't really stir anything stir things when I'm sauteing um, when you're simmering soups and especially lentils you do it does help to stir a little bit because they have a tendency to kind of stick to the bottom if you don't stir so every once in a while I'll just run my spoon across the bottom of the pot um, just to make sure that they don't they don't stick you know there is not a lot of oil in this there's not a lot of things to keep things from sticking to the bottom so and when I say simmer just know that that's pretty low it's a pretty low heat you don't want it to be bubbling and boiling away just a little bit and I'm gonna go ahead and add my coconut milk now um, because I didn't do it earlier because I was talking to you about it <laughs> yeah that looks beautiful and the reason I like to use um, the Serrano ginger lemongrass sauce with this one is because um, it has all these nice aromatics. So we use Serrano's as the base of this one. Uh, it does have tomatillos. And then it has the fresh ginger, lemongrass, garlic, and lime juice. And then we use um, rice vinegar on that one. And so it has like a lot, it's, it's a little bit of a sweet heat. There's some sugar in that sauce. Um, but it's just to balance the serranos because the serranos are pretty you know there's a lot of serranos in that sauce and they're pretty spicy pepper so when people first see this sauce they think that it is going to be similar to like a green sauce a verde sauce um but it's it's got a lot more going on it's you know a lot of times the salsa verdes will be made with anaheim chilies they're very mild they do have a really nice flavor but they don't have any heat. Our, this sauce is very hot, but it also has a lot of really cool aromatic stuff happening. Hi, Rachel, your favorite sauce. <laughs> it is, I mean, from the beginning, it's been our most popular. I thought that the hotter sauces would be the, you know, drawing people in, but it's really the Serrano Ginger Lemongrass. And I think it's that lemongrass. I think it's like, we take the time to process that and a lot of people don't do that in their homes uh, ginger and lemongrass I mean it just takes a lot of time and so on a big scale you know um, we have one kitchen gal Gwenny hi Gwenny <laughs> um, who does all our prep for us she's awesome she's uh, been a chef in a bunch of kitchens around town so she's super rad so she does that prep and jerk as well so uh, I think we have a really small but mighty team is what I always say so it's just the three of us making all the sauce and um, we just are, you know, willing to put in that extra time to do that prep work for you guys. So, but that's the nice thing about this recipe is that you're going to get a lot of flavor in this soup, but you didn't have to do the work with all the lemongrass and ginger because we did it for you. So I'm going to let that just bubble away. I'll stir it every once in a while to make sure it doesn't stick. And then I'm just going to show you a really quick salad dressing to make. Um, so if I am doing a recipe that uses our serrano ginger lemongrass sauce, then I, um, I can, will use it in the other dish. So this is gonna be just a pairing dish. So I'm gonna use a little bit of the serrano sauce in my salad dressing. So I know people really like measurements and I'm not really a measurement kind of gal. I mean, I have to be because I write these recipes, but if I was just making this salad dressing on my own, I wouldn't measure it. But I'll tell you in parts. So let's do a tablespoon of serrano ginger lemongrass sauce. Uh, and I would do two tablespoons of olive oil with that. Ooh. Okay, and so again, I'm, gonna, I'm using really lovely olive oil because it's the main ingredient in our dressing, and um, I really want it to shine. So two tablespoons of olive oil, one tablespoon of serrano ginger lemongrass sauce, I like to add a little bit of acid to my salad dressing. So even though the Serrano ginger lemongrass sauce has lime juice in it, I'm going to add some lemon juice. And I'm typically a lime juice kind of gal. I put lime juice in everything, but what I have today is lemon, so that's what I'm using. So a little bit of lemon. And then I'll just put a little bit of salt. So that was the juice of half a lemon pinch of salt. 
I have big hands, so my pinches are big, so keep that in mind. And then um, this is the, I like to use, uh, you know, brewer's yeast or nutritional yeast just to kind of bring dressings together. So I would say probably about a half of a teaspoon will do the trick. Um, let me make sure my flame didn't go out. Mm, it did. There we go. Okay. So just about a half a teaspoon of brewer's yeast. And then, oh yeah, <laughs> my mom is putting on there that she loves this soup. So the thing with recipe testing is you have to make a lot of versions of things to make sure that it's right. So I have to make sure the measurements are right. I have to make sure the cook times are right. So um, I have made this lentil soup <laughs> quite a few times. So my mom has got to try it. Our friends have gotten to try it. We have eaten it a lot. But luckily, um, it's a good recipe, so I don't mind eating it a lot. <laughs> Queen of Hearts Hemp wants to know how much sauce is in this soup. Two tablespoons of serrano ginger lemongrass in the soup. So you could make this um, salad and soup with our four ounce bottle of sauce. I'm using the eight today. <laughs> Um, but I like to write recipes to where you can, you're not using the whole bottle to where so you can use a little bit and still be able to do other things. I want you to get your biggest bang for your buck. Hey Dirk, will you hand me a um, whisk for my salad dressing? So in my salad dressing with the olive oil, the serrano ginger lemongrass, the brewer's yeast, the salt, and the lemon juice. And then whenever I make a salad, I start with a big beautiful bowl. Um, and then I just make the salad dressing in the bottom of the bowl. And so you want to whisk it together. I'm going to do... This is why I have um, big arm muscles because <laughs> I do a lot of whisking and stirring of pots. So I just want to make sure to whisk it together until it emulsifies there in the bottom of the pot. So just make sure it comes together nicely. And then what I like to do, just make sure my soup isn't sticking here. What I like to do when I'm making the salad is um, I whisk the dressing together in the bottom until it comes together. And then I'll put my greens on the top and then I'll just set it to the side um, and I'll mix it together right before we're gonna eat it. So that way it gives it a little bit longer life. If you're um, mixing your salad together right when you make the dressing but then you're not eating dinner for like a half hour, your greens and everything will get really soggy. This will keep everything nice. Um, so if I'm gonna put like croutons on, I'll just go ahead and put them on the top, but I just don't mix it together until right before I'm serving. And um, we have this awesome farm CSA from the Farm Punks, and they um, grow the most beautiful greens. That's all they really grow is um, wonderful lettuce, and they deliver every week. They um, deliver greens, and then their salad dressings that they make to your door. So we've had that CSA since they were um, on Sarah and my podcast. A meaningful Marketplace, I found out about their CSA. And they have a farm out in Boring that's like a shared farm with a bunch of newer farmers. Um, so I would recommend that for sure. I think they're stopping their CSA for the year, but bookmark it to get it next year. It's been one of the best decisions I've made in my life. I talk to my husband about it all the time. Every time I open a bag of these beautiful greens, I don't know if you can see them. Rachel in there. wants to know the name of the so farm pretty. again. Uh, farm Punks is the name of the farm. Quinn and Theus, and they are so wonderful. And they just grow greens, and then some herbs. And so when you get your CSA, they'll give you some herbs, some lettuce, and then the salad dressing. It's really awesome. My, um, my camp stove is finicky, but it's doing the trick. So as the soup kind of thickens and comes together, the lentils start to absorb all the coconut milk and the broth. So when you first start, it seems like it's going to be a really brothy soup, but it's actually really hearty. It, um, you know, all the lentils are in there and it thickens up and it's creamy from the coconut milk and it's really beautiful. So my timer just went off, which means the squash fish have been in there for 25 minutes. And so, Dirk, if you'll just poke one with a fork and see if it's tender. So you want to cook the squash until they're tender. So they're, they're um, roasting cut side down. 
skin side up. Still a little hard? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So maybe five more minutes. So we did it for 25, maybe five more at 350. So we'll finish that up and then I'll show you how we're going to plate it. So our salad can just sit here until it's ready. So we're going to eat this salad for dinner tonight. So that won't be for a couple of hours. So my dressing is fine in there. My greens are fine in there. I'm just going to set it to the side and I can eat it later. But then um, you would just toss it right before serving. So that dressing was super easy and it kind of brings together the um, components of the soup and the salad. And you know, we eat everything spicy. So like I said, if you are making it for kids or people who don't like spicy, you could use a little bit less of the serrano ginger lemongrass. But what it brings to the salad is just a little bit of heat. It brings the citrus from the lime juice. It brings, you know, the aromatics and then it kind of, it um, pairs with the soup really nicely. And then I like to, whenever I make salads, I don't put a bunch of stuff in there. Um, but I do like to add either sunflower seeds or I'm just gonna do these toasted papitas into the salad. And so it's super simple. We just did the dressing. We are doing the papitas and the lettuce. Um, but it just adds a nice little crunch. I'll do uh, sesame seeds sometimes or sunflower seeds. I always add some kind of nut to the salad, but I don't really do much other work. Just the beautiful greens and the dressing. And then I'll just let that sit until I'm ready to serve it. So I'll just put it to the side. Uh, and then we are almost done here. We're just gonna give this squash four more minutes. So did anybody have any questions that came up while I was cooking away? that I can answer because we are about to be done. So the soup looks like that. So all, you know, it was kind of liquidy at first, but it has really come together into this nice almost stew. Um, you know, there's not a lot of broth. It's got so much flavor and it's just a little bit spicy. Um, Dirk, will you grab me a ladle and then the squash and I'm gonna show you how to plate it. So in the time that our squash roasted, which was 25 minutes, um, we, you could hand me the small one, Dirk, if you want. He's here, you can just hand me one, honey. So in the time that the squash roasted, I was able to make this soup, so in 25 minutes. And I'm gonna just, um, it's okay, I got it. So my hands can handle heat. You wouldn't wanna just grab this off the hot pan yourself, but, I have superpowers and that is one of them. I can grab really hot squash. So you can see that the squash is roasted and it's kind of caramelized around the sides where its cut side was down on the tray. It, this is the small one, so it's done. So the small ones, 25 minutes, bigger ones, maybe more like 30, 35 minutes. But you just want it, you wanna be able to poke the inside with a fork. And you can see, I can even just do it with my finger. So you just push it, that, that means it's done. Because the idea is that you're gonna take a bite with the spoon. If you wanted to add Question. veggies or greens, what could you add? Into the soup, veggies or greens? Um, I, I'm hesitant to tell you to add other things because I think it might mess with the recipe a little bit. So um, with you know, one thing that you could definitely add that it would be okay would be like you could add some garbanzo beans, like canned garbanzo beans or ones that you cooked at home in your um, Instapot or how everybody's doing these these days. But I think if you tried to add a bunch of vegetables, it, the soup is going to turn out too wet. And you really want it to be this nice thick soup. So I wouldn't add too much to it. Uh, whenever I <laughs> tell people to add things, I like to test it first. So I've only made this recipe like this, uh, so I would just stick with this. And we are posting all of these recipes on our website, and you can go ahead and um, you know link to those so that it's always up there. You don't have to follow along with exactly what I'm doing, um, but the exact cooking times and measurements will be on there. Okay, so we know that our squash is done, and we... Oh, I see Momo Coco on here. Hey, buddy. <laughs> so you just go ahead and put your soup into this cute little bowl. And then I would top it with just a little bit of parsley just to make it nice and beautiful. You can see I posted a picture um, of it on my Instagram. But I think this makes a really nice 
you know, lunch. This is what we've been eating for lunch so the past week. Uh, so we'll have soup, salad, and then we have these beautiful little squash. So let's see if you can, I don't want to spill it, but look how cute that is. My daughter loves this. Um, it's really fun to be able to eat out of a squash bowl. So I hope that you guys make this recipe. It's up on our site. If you don't have our hot sauce, you could use a different sauce if you want, but I think that it's perfect with our Serrano Ginger Lemon Grass Sauce. So, hi Liberty. Um, so feel free to make this recipe. Let me know if you have any questions afterwards, and we will be back every Thursday at two o'clock to make more recipes. I'm gonna have my daughter come say hi. She's been patiently waiting. She has made me a sign that says mom. <laughs> so go, so mom. she has done a great job. It says go mama. So she was here to cheer me on. So thanks for watching everybody. And you can give me any suggestions later or send me any messages and you can find the recipe online. Thanks everybody. Bye bye.